good morning, church family. We are so glad that you have come and joined us this morning. It is a very, very special day because it's Baptism Sunday. And so we get to celebrate those who have decided to take this next step in their faith, which is such a beautiful thing. So we would love for you to stand and join us in praising God for the transformation that is going to happen today.
Praise God, he is in the house this morning and we are not through praising him. And so we are gonna celebrate together, amen? I'm sorry, amen? amen. There we go. On Christ alone, our chief cornerstone, no other foundation can we build upon. Not philosophy, nor the wisdom of man, all of the ground is sinking sand on this rock. Yeah. 
people said amen. Well, we're so glad that you guys are here joining us today. And so we love being in community together. So we're going to make you do something hard. And that is to turn to the people around you, shake a hand, maybe fist bump, say hello. I wanted a church where unchurched people could come to and enjoy it and be challenged with the uh, invitation to discover who Jesus was. In terms of the details, I had no idea. Uh, that's, that's where Mark Nelson came in. We felt it was imperative to provide um, music and drama and video and whatever we would use that was on the par with what they were seeing in their, in their week, whether it was on television or going to plays or listening to music at clubs. We wanted it to be something they could understand. The unorthodox mailers went out to 15,000 area homes, including that of a Detroit Free Press worker. Two weeks before Kensington's first service, this story showed up on the front page. First service, I was scared to death. Um, I mean, it was, I was more nervous than any football game I ever played. We opened the door to look outside to see if anybody's coming. <laughs> and, we, and I really thought, you know, there'd probably be a car or two. And we opened the door, and there's all these cars. Good morning. I'm going to welcome you to Kensington Community Church. I don't know what to comment on first <laughs> there. That's unbelievable. I don't know if I should comment on Steve Andrews' hair first or the advertisements that Kensington did in the very beginning. I think I couldn't tell if it was for a church or for, for a hunting program or not, but I think the thing I would say, it's like, man, like God has had such amazing favor on the life of this church, and he used people in powerful ways to draw uh, people who had no interest in church to come to church for the first time. And it's absolutely remarkable and I would say I am just so humbled to be a part of it now um, I don't know if I'll do advertisements like that I'm hoping I keep my hair we'll see what happens there but I know that God has a great future for us and that's what I wanted to share with you today quickly is just uh, an invitation on April 17th it's a Wednesday night I'm calling the whole church to come together at our Troy campus I want to see each and every one of you there what we're calling it is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know, it's so good for us to honor the past and honor the favor of God in the life of this church. Uh, we wanna do that well. We wanna honor the leaders of the church. We wanna honor all of you who have been such a significant part of seeing the growth of Kensington Church and seeing people come to know Jesus. I believe God really loves when his people honor one another. But also we wanna focus on today. There are great things happening right now as we move out in our communities, as we have these global partnerships, as we meet in seven campuses across Michigan. Amazing things are happening. People are being baptized. People are coming to faith. People are growing deeper in their faith through Alpha, all kinds of stuff to celebrate and things to pray for as well. How can we be praying for what God is doing now? but then we're gonna focus on tomorrow. You know, I've been here about eight months now, and I'm so excited about what God has been laying on my heart and our heart as a church. I said to you when I first got here, we're gonna catch a vision together, and I believe that the Lord is laying that vision out for us right now. And I want the opportunity to be able to share with you what tomorrow looks like. And so come on out, I encourage you. If somebody's not here right now, go tell them about it, April 17th we can come together and focus on yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hey, good morning, everyone. You guys doing okay today? Fantastic. Good stuff. A little bit more pep today, probably because of the weather. 
right? Probably felt amazing coming in today with the sunshine, and it's always good when the sun is streaming in through those windows that we have out in our lobby. But hey, I want to say a huge welcome to everyone here in the room. Everyone, welcome all of you who are streaming wherever you are watching from. My name is Andrew Kim. I'm part of the team here at Kensington, and there is a lot, a lot going on, including what Brian just talked about. And so I want to invite every single one of us here in the room and watching on stream to come to Troy Campus this coming Wednesday evening at 6.30. Because if we have ever asked the question, maybe we've been here only a couple of weeks, and we've just recently said, hey, you know what, Kensington is our home. Or maybe we've been here 30 plus years, or many of us in between. But if we have ever asked the question, where exactly are we headed? Now that we have a new senior pastor, Brian Mowry, where are we going in the next five to 10 years? And that is the question that we are going to be answering and talking about this coming Wednesday. And so we wanna invite all of us to come. And so if we're planning to be here, you see it on the side screen, just RSVP, kensingtonchurch.org forward slash RSVP. There will also be childcare as well for uh, pre-K, children. And so parents, please keep that in mind. And we will see you this Wednesday evening for that. Also, something else in regards to kids that is happening this coming Saturday, and this is for our third, fourth, and fifth graders. And we're having an event called Ignite that's going to be happening on Saturday afternoon from 12 to 2, and the cost is $25. And so this is a great opportunity for children to come and have a blast. And they're going to be having a lot of good food, kid-friendly food, which means there's going to be a lot of sugar, but don't worry, parents, we are going to run them around like crazy, and so they're going to burn all of that off before they get back to you, right? So don't worry about that. But in addition to all of that, we're also going to be having an incredible program that really points them towards Jesus and communicates the love of Jesus to them. And so this is not only an event for our children to come, but if we have friends, if we have family members, maybe other children in the neighborhood, a great opportunity to invite all of them to come this Saturday afternoon as well. And so if we're planning to be there, we see the link right there, kensingtonchurch.org forward slash ignite 345, and sign them up, and we will see you this Saturday afternoon. And also, some, one other event that I want to tell you about is an event that I am never, ever going to be invited to, and it's our annual women's retreat. And so our women's retreat is happening a little more than a month from now. May 17th is the weekend that it is happening, and you see it right here. This is the official t-shirt for the women's retreat, and it's Letters of Light and Love. So my body is currently being used as a billboard right now, and so, but I will do whatever it takes for women to get there, because if it's anything like our men's retreat, it's a great opportunity for women sort of just to break away from the normal with rhythms of their life and to go and to connect with other women and most importantly, connect with Jesus. And so maybe you've been at Kensington for many, many years and you have an incredible group of friends and community here at Kensington. You know what? Bring them all and go all together to Spring Hill. Or maybe you've been here for a short period of time and you're still looking for community. If that is you, the step is a little bit harder, but I want to challenge you to take that step of courage because when you go, story after story after story, I hear of courageous people who have taken that step and have found incredible, incredible friends over the course of this weekend. So if we are planning to be there, just sign up, kensingtonchurch.org forward slash women's retreat. And so today, in addition to the baptisms that are going to be happening, we're also in the second week of our series, Becoming. And in this series, what we're actually looking at is we're looking at the words of Jesus that are found in the Gospel of Luke. And it's actually called the Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke. And these words that Jesus spoke almost 2,000 years ago, I believe, are some of the most powerful words that he communicated when he was on this earth. Because through these words, he actually paints a picture. He gives us a vision of what the blessed life, of what the good life is. And it's not what you and I may initially think. And they're also foundational words because through this sermon, he actually tells us this is what it means to be my follower. And so Brian's gonna be up in a moment to really lead us in the thought of the day. But before he actually does this, Ariel is gonna read these words. And so let's take these words in together. Absolutely foundational, powerful, powerful words of Jesus. And the scripture says, Then looking up at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now, because you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. 
Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and slander your name as evil because the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Take note, your reward is great in heaven, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who is rich, for you have received your comfort. Woe to you who are now full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are now laughing, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the false prophets. Luke chapter 6, verse 20 to 26. Amen. Today we want to focus on the verse in Luke's gospel here where it says, Blessed are the hungry. This sermon is also recorded in Matthew's gospel, and this is what Matthew says. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Today, what I want to ask you and what I want to address is, I wonder, are you satisfied? Are you feeling content, full, filled up? Or are you chasing things that are leaving you empty? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Let's pause and pray. Lord, we're so thankful that we can meet in your presence together. I believe you're here now. I pray that you'd speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, I, help, I pray that you'd help us learn what it means to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Lord, would you come and would you lead us into joy and hope to contentment, would you help us find what we were created for? Lord, we pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Brian, and I just want to share a couple things before we jump into the message. And the first is this, is that today is Baptism Sunday. We're so excited about that. And baptism is simply when people are declaring uh, their faith in Jesus Christ. They're saying, my old life is gone, my new life has come in Jesus, and I want everybody to know it. Uh, these people, it's, a, it's, a, it's an outward declaration of something that's happened inward within them. And here at Kensington, one of the things I, I love that we do is that we just make the offer and invitation to anybody who wants to be baptized. You might be here today thinking, wow, I didn't plan to get baptized, but maybe the Lord is tugging on your heart in this moment. And as the service goes on, maybe the Lord encounters you and just says, hey, today is your day for baptism. Today is your day to say publicly, I I'm, I'm declaring that Jesus is Lord of my life. You might say, well, I've been baptized. I was baptized as an infant. Well, that really was your parents' choice to dedicate you before the Lord. Have you made a personal choice in that as an adult? And if not, maybe today is your day to be able to say that. We, we've got clothing for you, all kinds of stuff. Plus, it's like 70 degrees out there. You'll air dry, okay? It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. And so in our last service, we had a couple of people come. They didn't know they are gonna be baptized today, but they got baptized on the way out, and it was a great celebration. Maybe that's you today. Second thing I wanna say is this. Thank you so much for your generosity to the church. Um, Beck and I love giving to what the Lord is doing, and so we do that on a regular basis. I wanna challenge those of you who call Kensington your home to do the same. And, and the reason I challenge you to it is because it's a blessing to give to the Lord. It's a blessing. It's, it's a way that we worship him is by saying, you know what? When I say you're the Lord of my life, I mean you're the Lord of everything. And it's also, I think, the best investment you can make because we do incredible things all across this globe for the kingdom of God. And it's just such a joy to be a part of it. So I'm going to pray for our offering as our ushers come and wait on us. If you're here for the first time, please feel no obligation to give. We're so glad that you're our, our guests here today. But Lord, we, we just pray for this moment. We pray that it bring you much honor and glory as we give back to you. We believe everything we've been given has been given by you. And, uh, and so this is just um, an act of worship to say, Lord, we, we bless you with everything, including uh, our finances. And we just want to give back to you and we want to be a part of what you're doing. We bless you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 
Amen. Well, today I've given a title to my sermon. I don't always do that, but here's the title of my sermon. It's time to stop the wild goose chase. That's the title. Can you say it with me? It's time to stop the wild goose chase. Now that you really got it, let's say it loud. It's time to stop the wild goose chase. As I was preparing this message, and I'm going to move pretty fast here because they've only given me, they've given me less minutes today because of baptisms, so I'm going to be like talking really fast, okay? So here we go. I, I, was, I was preparing this message, and this phrase came up to me. It was like a wild goose chase. And then you know how you get down rabbit holes of research and Google and all this kind of stuff? And so I wanted to figure out, where did this phrase come from, wild goose chase? And I found out that it's actually a very old phrase. It started in literature about in the 1590s, 1593 to be exact, there was an equestrian manual written, and in that manual was this race called the wild goose chase. I bet, how many of you knew that this came from equestrian roots, wild goose chase? No, nah, nobody knew that, right? But I know that. I know that now. And so I'm telling you. The first time we really see it after that in the manual it was in Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet. You should all go back and read it, and you'll see it right in there, wild goose chase. Here's what a wild goose chase was. It was a horse race. All the horses would line up in a perfect line, and then when the gun was fired, they'd race out. The one that took the lead, now the others would fall back in line. This was the design of the race, and they would fall into a V formation like geese fly in the air. And from that moment, all the other horses would follow the lead horse wherever it went. It was kind of a chaotic race where that lead horse could go wherever it wanted to go. And so, it was called the wild goose chase. You chase the lead goose. Later on, that phrase would be adapted, and we would know that it would be used to kind of refer to somebody who was going through life, just kind of chasing after multiple things, and, and nothing was really landing for them. Later, it would become, and maybe this is what you thought, where it stemmed from, but that picture of somebody running out and actually trying to catch a goose, and it being like a wild goose chase. Has anybody tried to, to catch a wild goose with their bare hands? Now, I know what you do here in Michigan. I know what you do. You sit up in a tree, and boom, you kill it. I got that. Okay. But if any of you like ran after a goose and actually just caught it by the leg, I mean, I would imagine that that's very difficult but sometimes that's how life feels, doesn't it? You're just running after something, it's chaotic, and you never feel like you're able to grab a hold of it. Does anybody feel like that right now, like you're just on a bit of a wild goose chase? Well, it's time to stop the wild goose chase. What our passage is about today is about the thing that you can chase, that there's a guarantee with it. And if you chase this one thing, there's this great promise of a life satisfied, a life of hope and peace, a life of pure joy. It's time to stop the wild goose chase. You know that we all hunger and thirst, all of us. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 says this, come all you who are thirsty. It implies that all of us thirst, all of us hunger. And I'm not just talking about food and water, but there's this thing built in within each and every one of us where we, we groan for something. We need something to fulfill this, this life. We're, we're seeking something to bring us satisfaction, contentment, and joy in our life. We all hunger and we all thirst. It comes built in. You can even see this with young children, right? They hunger and they thirst. Uh, right away, they hunger and they thirst for food, for milk. But then as they go older, they hunger and thirst for things sometimes that they need and sometimes things that they don't need. Adults are no different. You hunger and you thirst for some things that you absolutely need. In fact, you die without them. But then we often hunger and thirst. Everyone's got an Amazon wish list, okay? We hunger and we thirst for these things that we don't really need. Maybe it's that promotion. Maybe it's a kind of reputation that you want to have. Maybe it's the amount of likes that you want. 
We have all these, this hunger and this, this thirst maybe to be known, to be seen, to be popular, whatever it might be. We have this hunger and we thirst. This is a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's good in the sense of this, is that God has made us in a way where we have the freedom to hunger and thirst after him. This is a beautiful thing. It's a bad thing when we hunger and thirst after the wrong things that lead us into bad places, that lead us into a misunderstanding of who we are, who God is, and why we're here. But we all hunger and thirst. And I would say probably all of us at some point in our life have looked for love in the wrong places. Anybody? You know that song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, come on, finish the song for me. Come on. Are you alive? Come on. Come on, Kensington. I need, like, I need more from you, okay? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. <laughs> He's got the whole song right here. That's good. All right. We're all, all of us at some point in our life have looked for love in the wrong places. Maybe right now you're looking for love in the wrong place. There's a story of, of a, a king named King Solomon who wrote the book Ecclesiastes. And King Solomon, he, he was on the hunt for what would satisfy him. And the whole book of Ecclesiastes is about the different things that he pursued in order to find real life. And so he pursued wealth, and he was very wealthy, wealthier than anybody else on the planet. Yet that didn't satisfy him. He went after drinking and partying, women, that didn't bring him satisfaction. He had the largest herds of all of Jerusalem, which was a big deal then, <laughs> and that didn't satisfy him. He went to education. He read all the books. He learned everything that he could learn, and that didn't bring him satisfaction. And in the end, at the very end of his book, Ecclesiastes, this is what he writes. He says, listen, after I've found all this out, after I've tried everything that this world has to offer, this is what he says in chapter 12. That's the whole story. I love how he says that. That's the whole story. I've tried everything. That's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. Nothing but God meets the longing of our hearts. This is what he found out. So my question is, what are you chasing? What are you chasing right now? And is it bringing you life? I love the promise that's attached to this beatitude. Blessed are, another way to say that is God is on the side of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now here's the promise. This is a wonderful promise. For they will be satisfied. Whenever Jesus or God says I will, you can bank on it, you can count on it, it's a guarantee. So for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. So if that's the case, why are so many people in our world not satisfied? In fact, some of the most popular songs that have ever been written are about not being satisfied, which means it, it hits a spot within our culture. It's like, wow, I relate to that because I'm not satisfied. There's a song by U2 called I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. There's a song by the Rolling Stones called Satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction because I try and I try and I, I won't sing that one, right? <laughs> or do the Jagger moves. Maybe I could try to do the Jagger moves, but uh, I won't. I won't do that. But we're, we're, we're in this world. We're trying to look for satisfaction and, and so many people aren't. I found a survey that was done, a study by Gallup, and they were trying to find out if people are satisfied, and this is what they found. Only 47% of the people surveyed said they were satisfied with their friends. <laughs> so the friend, your best friend right now, there's only a 47% chance that they actually like you, okay? <laughs> That's what that means. I'm just reading the research, okay? You should call them, give them a gift, something, do something, to help up the ante here. Only 26% said they were satisfied with their personal growth. Only 26% said they were satisfied with their career. Only 23% said they were satisfied with the things they did for fun and recreation. Only 14% said they were satisfied with the money that they had. So this is a picture of our world, is that 
not even half of our population likes their friends, right? Only a quarter of our population feels good about where they are as a human being. Only a quarter of our, our population really enjoys their job. Only a quarter of our population even likes the hobbies they've chosen to invest in. And, and only 14% are, are, are happy and content with the money that they have. And by the way, it doesn't matter if in the survey if the person had a lot of money or a little money. Those who had a lot wanted more. And guess what? Those who had a little, guess how much they, they, they want less? No, they wanted more too. And so we live in a world where we're not content. How about you? How about you? Are you happy? Are you content? Are you satisfied? Have you found what you're looking for? I love the Sermon on the Mount because here Jesus teaches us what will bring satisfaction, what will bring fulfillment. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness for you will be satisfied. So what brings satis satisfaction is what makes you satisfied? It's when you learn to chase after Jesus. Chase after Jesus, chase after righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is simply uh, aligning yourself to the ways and to the character of Jesus Christ. And it's not possible on your own, by the way. If you try to achieve it on your own, righteousness on your own, it becomes self-righteousness and nobody likes somebody who's self-righteous. Righteousness is actually a gift given by God through the power of his spirit. You see, we believe that when you give your life to Jesus, you're given his presence through the power of his spirit, and it's the spirit of Christ Jesus that lives within us, and it's the presence of Jesus that brings righteousness into our life. And so we don't have to achieve it, we just have to ask for it, receive it, and then steward it in our lives. Hosts the presence of God in our lives. This is how we become righteous, but we need to chase after Jesus. This is how you find life. Let's take a little look at a story about Jesus in John's gospel. This happens in John chapter four, five, and six. What happens in these chapters is that Jesus, he's gathering people up on a, 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 a plain, a mount. This is where the Sermon on the Mount comes, but now, there's this whole group of people there, and they're very hungry after Jesus is teaching them. It's about 5,000 men. That probably means there's about 10,000, 12,000 people, including women and children. And so here, Jesus is standing before this crowd. They're getting hungry. The disciples want to send them away, but Jesus says, no, let's feed them. They collect five loaves of bread and two fish, and Jesus does this miracle, and he heals every person. He, he feeds every person there. The people are amazed at what Jesus has done. The next thing that happens is Jesus sends his disciples across the lake. They get on the boat and they go across the lake. A storm develops, Jesus walks on water, Peter walks out on, on as well, and they go across to the other side. Now the crowd is still on this side of the lake. They wake up in the morning and they're like, hey, where'd that Jesus guy go? <laughs> we, wanna, we need to be around that Jesus guy. Did you see that miracle he did? So they find out that Jesus crossed the lake. So they cross the lake as, as well. And they find Jesus. And oh, you think that they would go and find Jesus and they'd say, hey, Jesus, yes, we just want to be with you. We just want to walk with you. But they do something different. Now listen, as a father, I've learned when my kids are buttering me up. It's, take about, it's taken about 18 years. I'm seeing parents look at their kids right now. It's awesome. It's like heads turned. It was great. I've learned it. Because usually it sounds something like this. Hey, they call me Papa, which is very endearing and cute. They say, Papa, Papa. Man, did you get a new haircut? It looks so nice, right? Like, oh, Papa, you know, that jacket, it's, it's slimming on you. You're looking very slim. Have you been working out, Papa? You know, these kind of things. And I know right there, they're buttering me up. All they want me to do is take them to the outlet mall or something like this, right? And they don't care about being in my presence. They just need something from me. This is what's happening. Jesus is across the lake. The crowd follows him there. And you would hope that they're just like, listen, we just want to be in your presence, we just want to know you. But what we learn from John's gospel in chapter 6 is this is what they wanted. They wanted some more bread. Hey, can you do that bread trick again? <laughs> we just want some of that bread. We'll come to you every day if you can do that for us. Just give us more bread. 
Now, now let me tell you two words in, in the New Testament for the word life. These are Greek words from one of the original languages used to write the Bible. There are two words for life, and the first word is bios, means life. Now, this word life means physical life. It's, it's what you possess. It's what you have. In Luke's gospel, chapter 8, there's the story of the, the woman who's sick, and she goes up to Jesus, touches his, the hem of his robe, and she's healed. Before that, we learn that she spent her whole life looking for a cure. That was bios life. What that means is she spent all of her resources, everything she had, in order to find a cure. But zo life is very different than bios life. Zo life is something that transcends bios life. It's not just what's in your hand. It's referring to eternal life. It's referring to a, it's referring to a hope that can last forever, a relationship with the Lord that can last forever. Forever. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 35, as that crowd is around him wanting bread, this is what Jesus says to them I am the bread of life. And he doesn't use the word bios here. He doesn't say, Hey, listen, I'm the bread of bios life. Just keep coming to me and I'll give you this physical bread. No, he says, I am the bread of Zo, this eternal life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You see, the crowd came to Jesus for bios life, but Jesus was ready to give them zo life. How many of us have crossed the lake or gone on these endless pursuits just for bios life when actually Jesus wants to give you zo life? What are you chasing? Is it bringing you life? What are you clinging to? Is it giving you life? I remember when McKenna was two years old. She's 18, almost 18 now. So when she was two years old, we were at the Mall of America in Minnesota. How many of you have been to the Mall of America in Minnesota? Yeah, it's like a travel destination, which I don't understand. It's a great, it's a cool mall. But um, anyway, if you haven't been there, go check it out, I guess. It's just what people do. And in this Mall of America, they have every store. They have two of some stores because it's so big. They have the Disney store, which... You know, I wouldn't go into unless I had four daughters. Okay, let's just be honest. And so we're in there, and it's just packed with people. And I remember McKenna, about two years old, she's going around looking at all the princess dresses and all these kind of things, just having the time of her life. And I'm seeing her, but she's kind of just moving a little bit further and further, and then eventually turns around, and she can't find me. You ever seen that, that face on a kid? They can't find their parent. They're like looking all over, like, where is Where's my dad? Where, where is he? And I can still see her. And then she saw this man that looked something like me. And she ran up to him and clung to his leg. Right? And then she looked up at him to discover it wasn't me. She thought she was clinging to me. She thought she was clinging to, to safety. She thought she was clinging to the one who was providing for her, the one who was bringing her life, you know, all these things. She thought she had my leg, but when she looked up, it was something completely different. And I just would imagine in a room this size and with people watching online that there are several of you who are clinging to the wrong leg, clinging to the wrong thing. Clinging to something that you think is bringing you life or you think is going to bring you life, but isn't. Not fulfilling. Because there's one leg to cling to. One person to cling to. And his name is Jesus. He's the one who brings us life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, and that big word, for righteousness. To be more and more like him. Pursue him Pursue him. This is where life is. One of my favorite commercials is for Dos Equis beer. I know, shocking for a pastor, right? I mean, you should go journal about that or something. But <laughs> the reason I like it is because it has the most interesting man in the world, right? It says, ah, the most interesting man in the world. And then he always says this at the end of the, of the commercial. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty. What does it look like to stay thirsty, to stay hungry for the Lord? I just want to share two things with you as I, as I close, because I want us to be a hungry people for the Lord. This is where the real adventure of life is. 
It's when we're hungry and we, we're thirsty for the Lord. Two things I want to share with you. How do you stay thirsty? The first thing is this. Stop filling up on junk. If you want to thirst and hunger for righteousness, then stop filling up on junk. Stop snacking before dinner time. Stop putting things in that keep you from him. I love the proverb writer in Proverbs 15. He says this, a wise person is hungry for knowledge while the fool feeds on trash. Listen, I'm pushing in on you today, but, but I think I can because I really want you to experience the fullness of life that Jesus has to offer. And if you want it, you gotta stop filling up on junk. If we want more of the Lord, we have to get serious about getting rid of the stuff that keeps us from him. If you want to diet and lose weight, you can't keep the Twinkies in the cupboard. You can't keep the double stuffed Oreos under the pillow. You got to get it out. If you want to pursue righteousness, you got to get bitterness out. You got to get unforgiveness out. You got to get those impure and unhealthy relationships out. You got to get the secret sins out of your life. And here's the good news, friends. When you bring these things to Jesus, guess what he does? He doesn't slap you in the face. He doesn't condemn you or guilt you. He says your sins are forgiven. I cast them as far as the east is from the west. Come, come all you who are weary, and I will give you life and life to the full. Stop the wild goose chase by purging out the stuff that's not leading you to life. Second thing, how do we stay hungry? How do we stay thirsty? I wanna challenge you to make knowing Jesus the number one priority of your life. Make knowing Jesus the number one priority of your life. I love in Matthew 6, Matthew says this, seek the kingdom of God above all else. This is our theme here, above all. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. Let me give you a great place to start. If you want to hunger and thirst after Jesus, a great place to start is at the very beginning of your day, every day, turn to Jesus. Turn to him. Seek him. Chase after him and discover life. Today we have people who want to tell you, I'm chasing after Jesus. Today we've got people here today that want to declare before you, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life. And they're going to go under the baptism waters and what they're saying is, I'm dying to my old life, I'm raising to new life in Christ Jesus. You can have a new life in Christ Jesus. It can start today. And maybe for you, you didn't come planning to be baptized, but today is your baptism day and you're just finding that out. And I want to challenge you to take the bold step and go visit one of my friends who will be right over here on this wall. We're going to sing a song in a moment. We're going to stand in a moment so you'll be able to kind of sneak out of your row and just come over to one of my friends over here and they'll talk to you all about what baptism is. And then you can get into the waters and just declare before all of us, I'm making Jesus the Lord of my life. Blessed. God is on the side of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be satisfied. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that we might find life, and not bios life, but zo life, a, low, a life that transcends bios life. And Lord, I, 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 I suspect that there are some people in here today for the very first time who are saying, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. And we celebrate that. Lord, I pray that you'd give them courage, even now, to take that next step to say, I want to make a public declaration of my commitment to you, Jesus. So Lord, we just thank you for this time. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to invite all who are able to stand with us. And we want to just reflect on what we've heard as we sing this song together. And this also gives anybody the opportunity who wants to, to come over here and just talk to one of my friends if you'd want to get into the baptism waters today.
Today is a great, great day for us to experience this. You all can have a seat. And so last I counted, we have 14 people who are getting baptized, and that number just kept on growing and growing and growing. That's amazing. It's amazing. And so the invitation is out there to all of you. If, if you feel that nudge to take that step today, we have people who would love to have a conversation with you. And maybe today is your day. You never know. And so this is one of the best things. I love this service because this is why we exist at Kensington to be able to take part in what God is doing in the lives of people, transforming lives with his life and with his love. And this is what we're about to experience today. And let me just say this about baptism. There's nothing magical that happens in this water, but really it's an external symbol of an internal reality. And that when someone is placed in the water, what they're declaring is, is that their old self, before they came to know Jesus, is, de is dead, it is gone. And when they come up out of the water, it's like 
somebody coming up out of the grave, the new life that we now have in Jesus. And that is what every single one of these people are declaring, and that is what we are celebrating today. I'm excited for every single one of these baptisms today. So Jared, why don't you come on over, my friend. Can we give Jared a hand? Jared's going to share his story with us. I'm glad you found your notes. I do. <laughs> I came to this church about three years ago. I was a dead man walking. I say that because I didn't know what true life was yet. But after three years of not just listening, but heeding the words that I hear from this stage, I know I am ready to turn it over to Jesus. I know he is the truth, the way, and the life. I see it every day now, all around me. Whether it's in the good fortune I've seen in business after I began to tithe, or the peace that the prayer team brings to my special needs son. After years of request and almost giving up. Or the new friendships and fellowship I have forged through our mutual love of Christ. I know Jesus belongs in my heart, and I never want him to leave. I will now and forever try, and I say try, to be the hands and feet of Jesus every day. Thank you, Kensington family, for being there. When me and my family needed you most, because without this place, it wouldn't have happened. Amen. <laughs> Hey, let me just say this about Jared. Jared is someone, he is an incredible, incredible dad. He's a guy, he's on our security team. And when our breakaway, our middle school students would meet up on Thursdays on the second floor, he's the guy who, just because he would just be here in the lobby, just making sure our students were safe. Um, and I remember, I remember the day that he made the decision and he said yes to following Jesus. And it was a month and a half, two months ago. Six weeks. Six weeks. And basically I said, hey, before, if you made the decision to follow Jesus, Tell someone. Tell someone before you leave or turn off the stream. And what was so cool is that when I got off the stage, he was standing right there because he was doing security that day. And he basically said, I'm telling you. And I was like, telling me what? <laughs> and he made that decision that day. And we all get to be a part of this celebration. Isn't this incredible? So Jared, I want to ask you two questions today. Have you made the decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I have. And do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? I will. And so, Jared, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Jonah, how old are you? Uh, 13. You are 13. Does that mean you're in the seventh grade? Yep. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. And just to let you know, you're not the only kid in the room, right? You got like a whole cheering section right up there for you, right? People who are with you in addition to everyone who's here. And so I'm grateful that you're making this commitment here today. These people are your biggest fans and they are with you. And so Jonah, I want to ask you two questions. Have you made the decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? following him for the rest of your life. Yep. Awesome. And so, Jonah, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready to do this? All right.
question. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you commit to follow him for the rest of your life? Amen. Come on, today's a good day. Then, Missy, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You ready to do this? Awesome. Good. Congratulations. <laughs> Can we give it up for Tara, everyone? Uh, what made you want to say yes today? I just wanted to follow my heart. Today. You felt that nudge? Yep. That's amazing. Thanks for having the courage Thanks. to take that step. We celebrate it with you today. Yeah. We're glad to be a part of it. Thanks. And so, Tara, I want to ask you, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. Awesome. So, Tara, today I want to baptize you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You ready? Thank you. One more. One step down. One more step down, my friend. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Splash. <laughs> the water's warm. The water's warm. I'm glad today's your day. Like we get to be a part of it today. So, Mitchell made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Awesome. Then, Mitchell, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready to do this? Awesome. Let's do it. One more step. Awesome. Fantastic. Julia, why today? Why? Why'd you make the decision today? I've been coming here for a year, and I just decided I want to make those choices as an adult. I'm very excited. That's fantastic. Do you have family and friends here today? Both. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And in addition to the rest of this community. And so, Julia, I want to ask you, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. That's great. And do you choose to follow him? Do you make a commitment to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. Fantastic. And Julia, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Today, you decided to walk up. Clearly, when you left your house, you probably weren't thinking baptism is in the cards for me today. And so, what made you want to take this step today? Um, it's, I don't really have a story, but I kind of got around a bad um, crowd, and I was like partying, smoking, drinking, and I just, I met someone who helped me find my way back to Jesus, and my life is really great right now. That's so. amazing. You say you don't have a story, but you have a story. And when you even say that, I see the fingerprints of Jesus all over it. I'm glad we get to be a part of this day of what God is doing in your life. And so, Julia, I want to ask you, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. Then I want to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Amen. Congratulations.
circle, Austin. I married this guy um, and his wife not too long ago. And so today is your day, right? Yes. And so what made you want to decide today? Um, I've been thinking about it for some time. And I just know there's no point to any of this without Jesus. Um, and he's given me everything I have, so. I'm proud of you, my friend. It's a lot of courage to do this. Austin, let me ask you those questions. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? I do. Awesome. You want to take one step forward? And so then, Austin, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? <laughs> perfectly dressed for baptism absolutely. as well absolutely and so yes. that's exactly yes. formal attire is always good yes. for water yes. and yes. so Corey if you just take a step forward yes. and so again like what made you want to take that step you felt something pushing you nudging um, you I've been clinging on to the wrong things and um, nothing's really working for me as a lifestyle choice and so mom always said to read my Bible follow the Lord, and so this is uh, my attempt to do that. Corey, we not only celebrate with you today, but also we stand with you and want to come alongside of you in this. I'm grateful that we get to be a part of it. And so let me ask you, Corey, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of <laughs> Maybe you'll have something uh, dry. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, we can thank you. So, Corey, then I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> Why you today? Uh, today was the day. Today was the day. Yeah. Just the way he said it earlier, and then your sermon last week, like, it's all just been, like, falling in line. That's great. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm grateful. I'm Thank grateful you. for you. Thank you. So let me ask you, Corey, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I have. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? I do. Awesome. So, Corey, then I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Yeah. So the thing is, is that we only get to hear a snippet of what God is doing. And if every single one of us, we can all tell God stories of the extraordinary things that God is doing. And so what we're going to do is that if there's anybody out there who wants to be baptized today, please just feel free to come up and we'd love to have a conversation with you. And so we'd love to do that. But in the meantime, let's do this. Just let's sing one final song. And so the band... And, and our vocalists are going to lead us in a song. And so if you're able to, let's stand and let's sing this out together. Let's sing this together. Build your church 
at least one more baptism that is going to be happening. And so if you are if you want to stay, we'd love for all of us to continue to celebrate. But if you need to leave, if you have to pick up your kids, if you have other things to do, please know that you are dismissed and we can go. And also, just as a quick reminder, we will see you this coming Wednesday for our vision night. And so if you have to leave, keep that in mind and we will see you this coming Wednesday at 6.30. But thank you so much, everyone, for being here and have a great rest of your Sunday.
closer to God today, but I don't really have another reason. That's cool. Great. Remind me how old you are again? 11. You are 11 years old. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I know your family's here. And so it's a really, really cool day to be able to have your family and also all of your friends. All these people are cheering for you and all these people are celebrating with you today, which is so cool. So guys, I want to ask you two questions. Same two questions I ask every single one of these people. Have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yeah. Awesome. So then I want to baptize you, Grace, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? You can plug your nose if you want. Perfect. <laughs> you don't have to kneel down. I'll take you. I'll take you into okay. the water. Why today? Well, I've just been dealing with a lot, like mentally, a lot of things pulling me a lot of different directions, and I just have been. Every time I keep coming back to this, it's just Jesus is the way. That that's the only way forward, and that's what I am now committing today. That that's who I'm going to be following. That's awesome. Today is your day of declaration. Day. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Then Ethan, I want to ask you, have you made a decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. Awesome. And Ethan, I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You ready to do this? Yes. Awesome.